Hello, and welcome to the Kingston Grammar School podcast. Throughout this podcast, we will be speaking with faculty and students alike about important topics surrounding the Kingston Grammar School, or KGS, community. I am your host, Shannon Vandermark, and whether you are a present or future parent or student, or simply interested in KGS, you are very welcome. For any listeners new to Kingston Grammar School, KGS is an independent co-educational day school located in Kingston-upon-Thames, England. Originally founded in 1561, the school can trace its roots back to at least the 13th century. KGS is one of the most successful co-educational schools in the country. Inspirational teaching and a deep commitment to pastoral care means that students grow in confidence and understanding and individual talents and creativity are able to flourish. This is the first episode that I have been able to record in person. So with various health and safety precautions in place, I made my way into Kingston Grammar School for the first time. The airy, bright and welcoming halls made me feel instantly at home. And I was met by friendly smiles around every turn. So this is a very special episode for a few reasons. Not only was I able to sit with my guests in person, which does make a huge difference, but also we were able to get some KGS alumni back into school for a chat about their experiences at KGS, their career paths, and to share some secrets of their career successes and how KGS has contributed to those. My guests today include KGS Class of 2010 BBC Sport presenter Katie Shanahan, KGS Class of 2006 entrepreneur Jerome Sibia, and this time I managed to squeeze in two chats with Headmaster Stephen Lehek. Stephen, in real life, 3D. I know, this is amazing, Shannon. To actually meet in real life and to be doing this, it's just, oh, is there some sense the world's getting back to normal? A little bit. Great. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. So today we're talking about people. Yep. And community, which is very important to Kingston Grammar. Hugely. Alumni. Yeah. We've got a huge number of contactable alumni who stay in touch because they want to, because they want to help, they want to support, they want to give in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. So much of it is giving of their time yep. and their experience supporting current students or recent leavers. Yeah. So we'll be able to put in touch somebody who's finishing their A-level, starting university, thinking about certain types of careers, put them in touch with people who are entrepreneurs, actors, engineers, right. doctors, and of course, many different forms of doctors in different areas of medicine, and put them in touch with people and say, why don't you have a chat? Why don't you connect? Why don't you go and visit? Why don't you do this? I had a great example recently. We were doing a bit of a tour of some parts of the States. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a bit of a kind of just as a bit of a sounding out. Yep. And we met some great people on the West Coast that I've not been to before. Mm -hmm. There's a great guy called Christian who said, absolutely love my time at KGS. I want to give back the bursary fund and any projects you've got. Great guy called John Bridger and his wife, Leslie, and they wanted to, again, got a lot out of his time at KGS. Right. Wanted to give to certain projects and bursary funding and science was his thing. And as we met them and then met other people around, we were suddenly picking up these contacts, thought, wow, we've actually got some students who go out to study in America. Mm -hmm. And some of them are going to be studying in California. And so I'm going to be studying at Duke. Yep. And we were meeting this guy in Charlotte, who was fantastic. And we met people in Chicago. So what we're able to do is put our 18-year-old students who are going on 19, who are starting universities in America where they know no one, right. with all these Kingstonians oh, that's great. who live in Chicago, Charlotte, New York, California. So they've got those immediate contacts. Yep. If there's a problem or just to say hi, go out for a coffee, mm -hmm. meet their families and... That connection between current students and alumni is just invaluable. It is. We feel so good just making the link mm -hmm. because we feel like we've done something that goes above and beyond just delivering education, 11 to 18, yep. math, history, English, hockey, rowing, football. We feel that's actually something that's special, something that's extra. Networking in its purest, truest sense, kind of philosophically for us, is about keeping people connected because they've got common interests mm -hmm. or their interests one day might align. And so if you're 18 or 80, if you're a computer engineer or you're a sound engineer, if you're, say, an entrepreneur compared to somebody who works in accounting and finance, mm -hmm. you know, your paths may cross. And there's one common thing which we can bring together, which is your connection with KGS. Mm -hmm. Our first guest for this episode is Katie Shanahan. Katie's fantastic. Yeah. I only knew of her before KGS because she works in sport and broadcasting. Mm -hmm. 
to me, she was part of that team of people, young upcoming presenters, breaking molds, breaking barriers, but actually yeah. coming to KGS and finding out that she was a Kingstonian. Right. Okay. Was like yeah. kind of, you know, amazing. I'm like, great. Yeah. Just watch her career. She is so good at what she does. Lots of staff have very fond memories of working with Katie yeah. as a student. She's got lots of great friendships. And she's just a really positive character in terms of what she's achieving, how hard she works, mm -hmm. the amount of traveling preparation she has to do for her role. So sharing that with students to say, you know, yes, headmaster catches me for five seconds on the radio and goes, hey, it's Katie. But actually, there's a huge amount of work that goes into what she does. Mm -hmm. And she's very dedicated to it. But she's also very committed to the school uh, and is very proud of what she achieved here and, you know, loves talking about her time at KGS and so hence giving back and being supportive and we just love being associated with her as we do with all of our alumni whatever they're doing we love the fact they all want to remain connected with the school mm -hmm. talk about what a great time they had but also share with us what they're doing now Katie is a great example of that Katie Shanahan is a BBC sport presenter delivering sports news to hundreds of millions of viewers around the world she can mainly be seen on BBC One BBC News Channel, and BBC World. Not to mention covering big events like Wimbledon and the Tokyo Olympics this summer. After playing international hockey for five years, Katie switched her focus to football. She's covered Champions League, Premier League, and EFL football games for various broadcasters, including BBC Sport, BT Sport, and Premier League productions. Katie can also be heard as the stadium announcer for the FA covering England women's football matches. Whilst working for BBC Sport, Katie was awarded a distinction for her master's in sports journalism. She was also given highly commended for the ones to watch on air category at the Sports Journalism Awards in 2019. At KGS, Katie reached six international finals with the women's hockey team before getting called up to the England squad. Katie has also received her grade eight singing, grade six piano, and grade five violin. After leaving KGS in 2010, Katie spent three years at Loughborough University, where she graduated with a 2-1 in her Bachelor of Science Geography degree. Hi, Katie. Hello. It's so nice to have you here at Kingston Grammar School. It's so nice to be back. How long has it been since you've been in these hallowed halls? I came back two years ago to do a talk at the careers evening, which was wonderful to see everyone kind of packed into one of the maths rooms, even people were queuing up outside, looking through the window. So I had to make sure I was speaking loud enough for the people outside trying to listen in. But yeah, it's just really nice to come back, especially where I met so many wonderful people. The yeah. teachers were brilliant along the way and all the friends I'm still in touch with. And so how did you choose Kingston Grammar? I've always lived in Kingston. I've actually only just moved to Wimbledon in the last year. So yep. I've lived in Kingston for 28 years. So well aware of Kingston Grammar School. And also I was massively into hockey and that was a big driver of me coming to Kingston right. Grammar. So I ended up getting a sports scholarship and it was always one of those schools I really wanted to get into. But, you know, when you're young, you're like, oh, I don't know if I can. And then passed all of the 11 pluses. And then the sports scholarship came along and I remember they were so kind. So I'd broken my wrist and they said, no, don't worry, you can come back whenever you like. We'll make a day for you. You can come and kind of slot in and join in one of the hockey sessions that we've got down at Disenfield in the afternoon. Just take your time and we'll do a fitness test. So from the get-go, they were always really brilliant with me. They were really welcoming, you know, whenever you're ready. Whether other schools where I was going for sports scholarships there, they all said, sorry, you've missed your chance. That's it. Right. Whereas KGS was the one that said, whenever you're ready, we'd love to have you come along. And then obviously I did really well and got the sports scholarship. From first impressions, me and my family were mm. blown away as to how understanding the school were yeah. and how willing they were to be flexible, bearing in mind I had just broken my wrist. So ever since that day, I kind of was merged in with the first team hockey team and it was kind of a good starter, my hockey life at Kingston Grammar School. Do you feel like you got a bit of everything from being at KGS? Absolutely. Sport is a huge part of my life and always will be, I'm sure. But uh, it wasn't just hockey. In the summer, I played for the tennis teams. I did rounders. I did all of kind of the sports that Kingston Grammar kind of let you take part yeah. in. But all those wonderful summer days down at Dissonfield mm. with all your friends, whether we'd be watching the boys play cricket after our rounders. And also away from sport, I did lots of house events. I was part of Woolworth. So I did house dance, which is hilarious because I think I could 
really dance, but then you just take part because <laughs> your friends are doing it. Right. And we did this, oh, we did some hilarious dances here. We did like an R&B dance. We went flat caps, you know, crop tops, all that kind of stuff, which you would never <laughs> see me do now. Uh, but the, the photos looking back are hilarious. We also did house drama. And then all of your friends would kind of watch each performance. So it's mm-hmm. very much a kind of support your friends. And even though you were deep down being really competitive, hoping that you won, there was a real sign of togetherness and uh, support from your friends. And then I also did orchestra. Mm -hmm. So in my family, my dad is a sporty side and my mum is the musical side. So I ended up trying to do both. Which looking back, I have no idea how I even managed to fit in an education alongside (laughs) all of this. But my mum was really good at piano. So I ended up doing grade six piano, grade five violin and grade eight singing. But the orchestra and being the violinist was really important to me. Uh, So I ended up doing that on like Tuesday nights and then Wednesday would be hockey, Thursday, whatever. So I really enjoyed being part of the orchestra. And then in my final year, I was chosen to be a senior prefect, which is a real honour, yep. if I'm honest, to wear the green robe. And it opened up to lots of different skills like leadership and teamwork yep. and getting that kind of responsibility is a big thing when you're 17, 18. So to be a part of the team that were given that opportunity was a really important moment in my life. Looking back now, you know, it's still on my CV, for example, because that just shows that you've got the leadership skills to go forward. So all in all, to answer your question about <laughs> About 10 minutes ago. (laughs) I've had so many memorable experiences at KGS. I could not have imagined of being anywhere else. It was the best, some of the best moments in my life. And the friends that I made along the way, even the teachers still get in contact with me nowadays. And it's just a really, really wonderful experience to look back on. And it sounds like there were just so many options available to you. Do you feel like the kind of breadth of opportunity gave you confidence when you left KGS? I think that's the nice thing. You were able to have loads of different options and yeah. kind of encouraged to try everything. Right. So my dad would always say to me, you can't say no to something you haven't tried. Yeah. So as you can tell from all of those kind <laughs> of extracurriculum activities, it meant that all of your friends were kind of mucking. If you liked it, great. If you didn't, that's fine too. And then you'd go and watch your friends in a play or they'd come support you at the hockey pitch and that kind of support network. So I think by having the opportunity to do lots of extra activities, it then mm. helps you for what you kind of want to do in your career. And you don't think back to, oh, now, but, you know, after the house drama, I knew that I would never be an actress, you know, because I was like, <laughs> but I, I actually really like the sport. Okay, so I like the bit of sport. Okay, what about the dance? Okay, well, I'm not going to be a dance because it wasn't actually that good. But, you know, <laughs> but it's good. You've got to kind of learn what you want to do by your experiences and what you learn that you don't want to do of course and you can do that all the way and it starts at school and yeah. then it goes into university and then you kind of slowly pick off the experiences that you enjoyed and you didn't enjoy and that kind of by having all of those opportunities at Kingston Grammar School certainly helped me mm. so tell me about your hockey career then so hockey career yeah started when I was nine years old playing at Wimbledon and then obviously took yeah. off when I was at Kingston Grammar School one of the best if not the best hockey school in the country mm-hmm. bearing in mind how many medals I've got stuck in my room because we won so many national finals we were on the telly at some point in the (laughs) indoor national finals imagine being 17 you're on the telly for scoring a goal or whatever spectacular yeah exactly I was famous at 17 no (laughs) so that kind of took off and then did five years with England from the under 16s the under 18s and then the under 21s and then unfortunately after that I had a big accident oh no so I was playing for Surbiton Hockey Club at the time and it was a cup game we were playing against Oxford University right I was chasing down the ball. The defender went for a reverse stick shot. Now, if you're going to give it a go, you've got to know it's going to go along the floor, especially if you're a defender. If you're an attacker, it can go anywhere because the goal's quite big. But if you're a defender, so she kind of got it wrong, shall we say. Uh. And I was about a couple of yards off her and it hit the blade of the stick and shot straight into my head. In between my eyebrows. I collapsed to the floor obviously knocked out because a hockey ball is harder than a cricket ball coming right at you at probably 60 miles an hour. I Jeez. don't know. The game was in Oxford, so they just so happened to have the best plastic surgery unit in the whole of the UK. So I was well taken care of. I fortunate. Was very fortunate. And uh, I ended up having to have plastic surgery all around, kind of in between my eyebrows. Well, and I'm looking at you and I can't see anything. And you're very kind. Were you starting to look at kind of sports journalism while you were at KGS, or is that something that occurred to you after the accident? 
I always fascinated with media from the get-go, whether it was from Blue Peter. I think I really loved Blue Peter. And I was always like, God, I'd love to be a Blue Peter presenter, which is hilarious because quite a few of my friends are now Blue Peter presenters. But the education was key for me actually opening the doors to media. So I got two A's and a B. That led me to go and get the offer that I wanted from Loughborough University, right. which is one of the best universities for sport. I was playing England hockey at the time, so it was very much at the forefront of my mind. Loughborough have these amazing studios. You can go do your own radio show, do what we're doing now, a yeah. podcast. They've got TV studios. And I ended up getting so much experience just from that extracurricular media centre that Loughborough put on, doing live TV, you know, wow. live sport. We do the elections like we do the elections on the BBC. Wow. But it would all be student-based. Mm -hmm. So even though any experience was incredible, but it just meant that I was like, oh, what do I prefer? Radio, telly. And then all of that experience enabled me to actually get my first job in media. One of the alumni got in contact. It was like alumni day. And she was like, oh, I was actually really impressed with Columbia students. You know, would any of them be interested in applying for the Chelsea football club role that we've got going? Right. So obviously a number of us went for it. And luckily yep. I was the one that ended up getting my first foot in the door, which you know how important that first way into media. Yeah. So I ended up being a production coordinator there. Okay. If it's Chelsea, Manchester United, I'd have to put the cameraman, the presenters, the yep. food, the satellite feeds, everything. You have to put all of that production mm -hmm. together. So then when you see it on the telly, you know, it's all those people behind the camera that really do an incredible job. So that was my first stage from that. But really, it did start at Loughborough and like, like the kind of interest that I had before that. Obviously, the sporting background was massive. Yeah. The moment you say, you know, I'm an England hockey player, that helps you in sport. Players know that you just get it. Yeah. So even when I speak to Premier League footballers now, they just 100% know that I know what I'm talking about. But it just goes to show that all of your experiences can kind of come to fruition and you don't realise when that's going to happen. Yeah. So hockey, sport, and then realising how to get in through my Loughborough period was definitely a way of me getting to where I am today. And you touched a little bit on KGS academics. What are your memories of those years? I did geography, psychology and English for A-level. And I think what was nice in sixth form, it's obviously more intimate, our English class. Right. I loved it. There was like 10 of us. We were just able to get more time with the teacher. We were able to just really engage in terms of having lots more intellectual and intimate discussions. Mm -hmm. I had Mr. Morton, Miss Brown as, as geography teachers when I was here and they were so enthusiastic. Yeah. It really rubbed off of me. We went away for quite a few geography field trips and geography was always a massive love of mine and that's yeah. obviously why I went to do that at university. But all in and all, the education here is absolutely brilliant. But also, I think the enthusiasm, you get on really well with the teachers. Mm -hmm. And all my friends, even we talk about today, how much they learn from the experience and also the variety of learning there is here. And there's guest speakers, which is really important when you're trying to figure out what to do as yeah. a career. Do you feel that the KGS Careers Department gave you the encouragement to pursue the career that you obviously love? I think they gave you the belief. And that was huge, especially for media. The theatre here is incredible. Yeah. We had lots of people that then went into acting. And you're always given the opportunity to just give it a go. Just give it your best shot. With the hockey, I was given so much support to then go and play for England. I wouldn't have had those opportunities if I hadn't got the support network of Mr. Royce, Miss Bell, Miss Brown. They're all really behind me to be like, you know, big weekend for you coming up. What can we do to help? Making sure you recovered. So everything was really tailored and you were very supported when you were going for those big moments in your life. The other thing that I find interesting about KGS is the independence that you're given. You seem to be really trusted, especially as you get into upper six. There's a lot of pressure in sixth form, but I think KGS really gets you ready for that moment and making sure that you're 100% ready for when those exams come around. But then everyone knows that after those exams are over and hopefully you've got the grades you want, you have a summer to celebrate. Yeah. The amount of times that we were down at Ditton Field or we'd go into the Fairfield and we'd all have our picnics and stuff yeah. like that, there was a real celebration after those moments. And I think that's important. If you've got a really pressurising time, you've got to celebrate after because that's what you've built up for. That's the important moments of your life you've got to celebrate. Lastly, can I just ask you about the importance of the community? I know you've mentioned that you're still in touch with friends and faculty. Do you think that this is quite a unique thing? 
it depends on the school, doesn't it? Obviously, I highly recommend to loads of people that are like, oh, I'd love to go to Kingston Grammar. And I'm like, well, you've got to go. It's yeah. amazing. You know, I'm still in contact. And my best, best friends have come from Kingston Grammar School. And those moments that you kind of form together, whether you go away, whether it's to New Zealand on a hockey tour or whether we went to Norfolk and I remember having this huge mud fight with lots of friends. And all of my <laughs> best, best friends have come from Kingston Grammar School. And whenever I'm recommending Kingston Grammar, I'm just like, it's such a friendly school. Yeah. I remember being the happiest child when I was here mm. I knew everyone at the school they literally were so welcoming you could go and pursue whatever path you wanted to but also there was no worry I wasn't concerned I just remember coming home at the end of every day of school and being like that was the best day but that oh. was like every single day and I'm not just saying that I just remember having so many fond memories here there was so much change you know one day you'd be playing hockey the next minute you'd be doing dance the next minute you'd be doing something in a science lab or there were so many incredible experiences. And I think that's what you take with you, with your friendships. And that's why my best friends are my KGS friends. We have a KGS WhatsApp group. I know the boys do. We'll all then go to each other's weddings and you'll see your friends kind of have babies along the way. So yeah. KGS never really leaves you. It yeah. stays with you. And those friends and partnerships that you've created along the way just carry with you for your whole life. And I think that's something that I will always take away from KGS. And just to finish off, can you tell our listeners how to find you on social media? My social uh, channels, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook are all the same, at Katie Shanahan 3. I'm making a website as well. So, oh. I'm, you know, fun and games over lockdown, trying yep. to, you know, get all these things in order. So that'll also be available. But yeah, loads Great. of sport coming up. There's no stopping. There's you know? no stopping. <laughs> so kids, so, get into sport. Yeah, get into sport. It's a great career in sports journalism. So hopefully it just keeps going forwards and going from strength to strength. I'm sure it will. Oh, it's so great to meet you, Katie. I know, you too. It's been yeah. really fun. Really Thank fun. Okay, thanks well, so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Back with Stephen, I was interested to hear about more notable KGS alumni. Oh, it's so invidious to pick people out because obviously we're really proud of all of our alum yeah. and, um, and they're all great guys and girls. I love the fact that since 1978, the school's been co-ed. Mm -hmm. So you have all these kind of this rich history of all these characters, you yep. know, like going back to Edward Gibbon, yeah. you know, kind of phenomenal stuff. And more recently, very literary kind of people like Michael Frayne were in the Frayne Library, right? So yeah. and this guy, and they've got the Frayne Theatre. And I've met Michael Frayne a few times and he's a hugely impressive character, uh, right. as his wife Claire Tomlin near there. Mm -hmm. And so you're really proud to think, wow, that guy came to the school I now lead. And there are lots of other people in sport, particularly around hockey, rowing, enormous numbers of characters and people don't know who they are. You don't have to drive past the school to see our wonderful freeze of 18, no yeah. Alumni, but there are hundreds in there. Yeah. I loved recently having a lot of contact with, so we visited states and we didn't get to see, um, but we communicated with a guy called Vic Flick. And people will say, who's Vic Flick? Okay. He wrote and played the riff to the James Bond theme tune. He is responsible for... Dun, 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 And everybody knows that and think, yep. so he went to KGS and all of a sudden that's like becomes your most famous alumni because yep. there's something that everybody knows. Yep. And it doesn't matter what country you are in the world, everybody knows that tune. So we've been in touch with Vic. He's quite elderly now, he's into his 80s, but he's such a great guy, really supportive. But there are so many. I think what I take great pride in is the younger alumni, so the people I know, mm -hmm. and I've spent some time with them in the school. They were either recent leavers or have been here in, you know, years and they're going into hugely important fields and so yes a lot of sports a lot of entertainment mm -hmm. acting and comedy but also a lot of medicine yep. and not just straightforward you know i say there's nothing string as straightforward in, in medicine but they're actually getting involved in a lot of social enterprise mm. and actually how they can use their talents their experience their opportunities to support other people mm -hmm. you just think how lucky are we to have all of these people associated with our school just so diverse. Mm. Our next guest is Jerome Sibia. The list of things he's accomplished in his relatively short life is so impressive. Was he still here when you became head? No, I didn't overlap with Jerome. You're absolutely right. Entrepreneur, done an amazing number of things. Yeah. We run Young Enterprise here, but we also do entrepreneurial competitions. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the great teachers here, Andy Beard, he's been doing loads of entrepreneurship competitions over the course of lockdown because right. students can do it from home. And that's now coming back in school. They're going to be doing presentations. They've yeah. got some phenomenal ideas, some of which could really run. Right. And we've got people like Jerome who understands this yeah. world coming in to be one of our judges to say, I like that. Yeah, great. <laughs> Let's connect. Yeah, amazing. 
Having had Stephen speak so highly of Jerome, I thought it only fitting that I sit down with him to speak about how KGS influenced his sixth form years and made him the huge success that he is today. As a sports scholar, Jerome was part of the hockey team that twice won the English school's national championships and was also a senior prefect. He went on to read economics at the University of Birmingham and University of Munich before playing hockey in the Spanish League. Upon graduation, he joined McKinsey and Company as a management consultant and then Barclays Capital in corporate finance. He subsequently became a company founder and launched a series of startups. During the COVID-19 crisis, he founded LockdownHaircut.com, the world's first virtual barber, which went viral and culminated in a DIY home haircut for the current headmaster, Mr. Lehek, live on ITV News. It won the Telegraph Startup of the Year 2020 and raised thousands of pounds for the NHS and local communities. Jerome, welcome back to KGS. Hey, delighted to be on the show today. Thanks for um, having me. I do kind of feel that we sound so close to each other as almost as if we are sitting side by side. But we are at a proper dining room table and we're very far apart. We're in this beautiful library. Was the library like this when you were here? Has it changed? It hasn't changed at all. Yeah. It's exactly the same. When did you join KGS? I joined in September 2004. I was yes. here for two years. So I joined former A-levels. Right. So I spent two very happy years here at school. How did you find the sixth form program while you were here? To be very honest, yeah. um, some of my closest friends today are still from my time here at school. Right. The chances and opportunities afforded to us in the sixth form were second to none. And a lot of the things I did at the time shaped me today, whether it was the chance to take part in debates in the Given Society and whether it was to try your hand at startup stuff. Yeah. I and mean, entrepreneurship is such a big word and loaded word. I say startup stuff. Yeah. Um, being startup <laughs> stuff in young enterprise, yeah. um, whether it was having phenomenal teaching in economics with Mr. Ricketts, whether it was our very engaging politics classes with Mr. Sawley, both teachers who are still at the school today, which I find very great. Right. German with Mrs. Russell. That longevity as well, the fact that they're still at the school speaks, speaks a lot about the type of environment and culture the school has. And I can name three of my favorite teachers still being here 15 years later. Wow. When you were contemplating a profession, did the careers department here at KGS offer you multiple options and opportunities? Yeah, I think that's actually one of the strongest aspects of the school experience. It is the fact that you're exposed to a whole bunch of different things um, and the fact that you're allowed to learn to fail. Um, you're allowed to go on stage and debate something you know nothing about in the given society. Um, you're allowed to try your hand at startup stuff mm -hmm. with Young Enterprise. Um, right. The fact that you're allowed to be exposed to all sorts of weird and wonderful former alumni coming in to speak. Yeah. Those things are things that are very special and unique to the school. They give you a sense of confidence. Mm. It's okay to learn by doing. You don't need to know all the answers. Right. And I think it's that curiosity that the school really embeds in you that's, that's very important. And I think one of the big things about what I've done, I've done a whole bunch of things over the years, but the underlying thread has always been a comfort with ambiguity. What does that mean? Because I want to be comfortable with amb ambiguity. How do you do that? What does that entail? Well, it's being just thrown into the deep end and just yeah. being told to go figure stuff out. I think it's a bit like being here today with you. And um, this is my first ever podcast recording. You've thrown me onto a show with <laughs> Katie Shanahan, a world leading BBC journalist who does this as a full time job. Exactly. And being asked to come in side by side with her. Again, that's another example of what the school does. It just throws you into things and just gives you license to try. Right. I think that's super important. And so everything I've done has been on the basis of that. Like, hey, I don't know all the answers, but I'll go figure it out. It's funny, we talk about podcasts today and speaking. I've got to speak at a wedding in a few weeks. So I'm best man right. there. It's actually another boy from Kingston Grammar. Right. It's the third best man speech I'm doing and the second for someone from Kingston Grammar. Wow. It's funny that the community is hard to, hard to escape. And that just speaks volumes, particularly since you were here for only two years. That's right. So you formed really solid friendships in those two years. Very deep, meaningful friendships. And yeah. I think that's something for any of those listeners here today who potentially are at a school. Not that I'm trying to poach you and come to, come, to, <laughs> come to Kingston. But if you are listening here today and you are looking at what you do for the next stage of life and looking to do your A-level somewhere, come to Kingston Grammar. You're going to have a great time. You're going to be best man at multiple weddings. Start saving up. Yes. Actually, I want to actually come back to that point around yes. coming to school at 16. Yeah. And coming into an environment where lots of people already have their deep established friendships. Yeah. So the fact that I made some of my best friendships age 16 in a school that already had three quarters of a student body here right. coming through from their GCSEs says a lot about the type of school this is. Yeah. And um, this is a very welcoming school community. 
It's very encouraging and supporting, and it's open to new ideas and new people. That plays a big part in the grounding that you receive at the school. And I think a lot of the startup stuff I've done afterwards has also been because of the openness to new things and trying new things that I've had coming here and I've learned from here. Can you just tell me a bit about your career path? I know that you do startup stuff. Yeah, startup stuff. How did you figure out that that was something that you could make money at? So I didn't actually do it to make money and I still don't do it to make money. I just do it because I like to question how things are done and to be on an adventure and to just go and question the status quo. I think that's why like, I do these startup things and launch these companies. I did the very non-startup thing first. So Kim Kingston yep. had the most inspirational teachers I could ever have wished for. Yeah, I think Mr. Ricketts in economics in particular is someone who really, really left an impression uh, on me and is the reason I went to economics university. Mm-hmm. I then joined McKinsey. So I was a management consultant mm-hmm. coming out of university. I spent two very happy years at the firm. I then yeah. went to play hockey in Valencia. Yeah. Um, something very, very different. I think that's part of the thing that the school allowed you to do. It allowed you yeah. to say, hey, you know what? You can do something. They do something very, very different. It still is okay. Yeah. So I played hockey in Valencia for six months. I spent five years at Barclays in equity sales. Right. And one of the great things about that was that you start very, very early. I was at my desk in Canary Wharf at quarter past six each yes. morning. I was done at 6 p.m. every day. That It was like structured. It was market hours. You know when you start, you know when you finish. Yeah. Almost being like in a factory. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was great because it gave me my evenings to go and look at other things I could do in my life. Um, mm. Apart from seeing my girlfriend at the time, I had the other nights off. And so yeah. I was looking at launching companies. And so wow. I launched a platform for supply teachers with a friend. Yeah. Then I was like, hey, this is really fun. I want to do this stuff more. So I went to look at a few other startups and I launched two or three whilst I was there with friends who then went on to run them. And I was always like, hey, I still need to stay here and do like the sensible thing and like make my parents proud and do the whole career thing. Right. But at some point I was like, hey, I can't keep being off the desk with like fake dentist appointments. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to meet people during the day and there's no right. way you could be off the desk. And, and then in 2019, I finally pulled the trigger. I left um, with a very good friend, Dan Silvertown. Mm-hmm. He was at the same school. He was a pupil at Aylesbury Grammar, which is where Miss Lehek, the current head, was his headmaster. And we only came across Small this world. when we were doing a live interview on ITV News with Miss Lehek, where we cut his hair. And I'll come back to in a second. Yeah. So I then went to launch my own company full time with Dan. Um, we're about to sell it, which is very exciting. And we're off to do new things. In the course of the last few years, I think in aggregate, I've gone involved in about 10 startups now. Wow. Um, and it's um, been something that I've really enjoyed and it's been a really fun adventure. It, so tell me more about the lockdown haircut. I love it. I love that. Yeah, sure. So during what was otherwise quite a difficult time during lockdown, it seemed that everyone was doing one of three things. They were either like panic buying toilet paper, <laughs> talking or about- Or flour. Or flour, <laughs> yes. Yeah, all those new bakers. <laughs> yeah. People were talking about a Tiger King from Netflix, yep. if you remember this, mm-hmm. or sharing snaps of their like DIY home haircut disasters. Yeah, I was cutting my own hair um, via like a YouTube tutorial and I was like, hey, there must be a better way to do this. And so I went to Google, as everyone does nowadays, um, and typed in how to cut my own hair. Yeah. And there wasn't really anything. So I was like, hey, this is a pain point. Yeah. Kingston Grammar taught me all about how I need to solve for pain points and problems. And so I was like, cool, um, let's go build our own platform to cut people's hair. A great thing for both sides. Yeah. So because the hairdressers didn't have any work either. Some of them were breaking lockdown rules because they needed to eat. Right? Yeah. And this is right at the beginning when the furlough scheme wasn't really fully in place yet. There was lots of uncertainty about who can claim, who can't claim. Right. And so they were still breaking lockdown to earn money. Yeah. And so we tried to figure out a better way of getting them a source of income. So good. We want to do something good for the community. So we gave all our platform fees to the NHS Better Together charity. They do lots of wonderful work for the NHS. That's so great. Would you like to talk about any of your new projects or is it too new? So there's a whole bunch of things happening at the moment. I am involved with a company called Freerider, mm-hmm. um, which is a maternity brand. Uh-huh. It's all made from sustainable materials. So it uses like lensing model rather than cotton. Right. It uses like 90% less water in production. Wow. All the um, factory workers are paid fair wages and they're all audited. And it's disrupting what's a very sleepy market for mm-hmm. maternity. I'm involved with a company called Young Ones, which is a hockey brand, which some of the listeners here may have heard of. Yep. I'm involved with Cavalier, which is uh, another underwear brand. Uh-huh. And there's a whole bunch of these things. Um, they're all doing their thing. And in terms of, for me, what's next, it's still, it's still TBD. Yeah. One of the things that school really taught me mm-hmm. was making sure you celebrate success. Yeah. So every time, shout out to my year who did win the national championships. Every time we won like a round, we won the county round, we won the south round, we won the nationals. 
And this is indoors, outdoors. So all these various events. Each time the headmaster, Mr. Baxter at the time, invited us all into his study to mark the occasion, mark the moment, take a photo, mm -hmm. and remember this. Because he said these memories will at some point fade, particularly now in this sort of like lockdown life where things have seemed quite disconnected and disjointed mm -hmm. and building like team culture and building a shared sense of purpose is very important. And that's oftentimes done by dwelling on success. And we don't do that enough. We oftentimes spend our times looking back at failure or mm. things going wrong. I think that's such a good point. But sometimes it's okay just to celebrate the small wins yeah. in your day, in your week, in your year, in your life. And not just yours, but those of your friends and people around yeah. you. Celebrate success. It's super important. And it's fun. Let's celebrate that it's, you know, Tuesday or Friday, junior, Thursday. Yes. Like, like it's just fun. Like stop being so serious. Exactly. I think that's great. It's just life. Well, thank you for sitting down and chatting with me today, Jerome. It's been so exciting just hearing your perspectives on life. Can you just tell the listeners where they can find you on social media? Yeah, social media. So, okay, obviously you need to download LAPS. So yeah, go to laps.app. It's the new Snapchat. It replicates a disposable camera. So the idea is that you download the app, you take some photos of an event, take one photo, you can't see it. So you have delayed gratification and it replicates the whole development of a role. So, so clever. you have that discovery piece later. So you can see it in 24 hours and not now. And so you just spend your time at an event or at a party or with someone looking at your phone, adding some filters and some hashtags and yeah. um, tagging. You just take the snap, put your phone down and you go back to living in the moment. So good. It's great for the post-lockdown party season. Um, so, so yeah, you can find me on Laps. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'm on social media, my Instagram is sibsy88. My LinkedIn is Yurun Sibia. Thanks again for letting me be on the show today uh, and also pleasure. giving me the chance to be back in school. Absolute pleasure. Cheers, Shan. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Kingston Grammar School podcast. If you are interested in following either or both of our guests on social media, you can find links to their online accounts in the episode notes. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so that you don't miss an episode. And take a moment to rate and review the podcast as it does help listeners to find us more easily. Join us next time when I get to speak with more luminous KGS alumni. Special thanks to our guests in this episode, Stephen Lehek, Katie Shanahan, and Jerome Sibia. Thank you also to Allison Williams, Director of Marketing and Admissions at Kingston Grammar School. This has been an Applied Reality production, executive produced by Shannon Vandermark, sound design by Alex Marcoux.